Perfect. So I'm going to move on to the vCenter Event Broker Appliance Fling. So let me go back to here. Let me kill this real quick. Kind of reset my train of thought. Okay. Um, I shouldn't need this anymore. Okay. So this fling is relatively new and it's this one here. It's actually an open source fling. So we check it out. Basically the idea is we're using an appliance that you deploy and it is watching vCenter for any vCenter events, right? And once it sees an event that you want it to uh, care about, it will trigger an action, right? So you can have all kinds of automated actions based on vCenter events, which is pretty cool. And basically under the covers, it's using open function as a service. So it's open FAS. So. Uh, quick uh, question. Sure. Wouldn't this be something that would that would be useful in VROPS? Yes, so VROPS um, has multiple ways. Well, actually, if you think about it, so if it's an event-based action that you want to take place, yes. it's better coming from Log Insight, right? Because that's all event and log. Uh, that's action. true, OK. So you could create an alert in Log Insight, push that alert then into VROPS, and then set up VROPS to take some kind of an automated action off of that and whether it's an out of the box VROPS action or you could use the VRealize orchestrator management pack and tie in some really cool VRO. Uh, and all of this assumes well. that the, the customer has these other products, but I'm waiting. Exactly, yeah. So it's a considerable more amount of work to do that. Um, not saying it's it's all that difficult, but it's just a little bit more. This this one's cool because I can see this. Uh, you could do all kinds of interesting events, uh, actions based off of events. So, yeah, different, I guess, different use cases, right? So, how do we install this? So, basically, it's a virtual appliance, which I've already downloaded here. So, I'm going to kick off the deployment of that real quick because it will take a couple minutes to do. So, first off, go to your vCenter, deploy an OVF template. Browse to that OVA. There it is. Pretty small. It's like a gig. Click next. Give it a name. And I have um, DNS records already set up for all this. And IP addresses. Okay. Click next. Choose your data store. Click next. Choose your network. Click next. And now here we've got a bunch of things to fill out. So what's the host name? I'm calling it viba.tilkins.local. IP address 46. Uh, this one tripped me up the first time. I did one of these, and I didn't read it. And specifically, they want the CIDR notation. So it's going to be like a slash 24, right? And then nothing worked. So just be aware of that. Gateway, DNS. These are space separated, so not your typical comma separated. Uh, DNS domain, NTP, these are again space separated. And then if you have a proxy to get out to the internet, which I don't, and then set up some credentials here, so root, and then the OpenFast admin password. And then it wants to know which vCenter to basically look for events, right? So we're going to put in my main one here. Um, I'm going to set up a specific user account. It can be read-only, which I'll do as soon as I start this deployment because it'll take a minute to deploy. So, And then I'm going to disable TLS verification because I have self-signed certificates. Uh, and if you want to enable further debugging, you can do that here as well. I didn't mess with this uh, pod CIDR network, but my guess is it's using some form of Kubernetes under the covers and it's deploying a pod within it, right? So I'm just going to leave that as is. So click finish, and now it's going to deploy. So next step, I need to set up those credentials that I gave it to look for events, right? So if I come in here, users and groups, we'll add a user. Do that. 
and we'll call this event broker. Very good. We've got that user account. And I'm just going to assign a global permission against my entire PSC domain. And it just needs to be read only because it's just looking for those events, right? OK, so that's all set up. Uh, it's still deploying, so we'll let that deploy. If we look at the documentation, uh, let's just go through this real quick. So basically, they give us an example, and that's exactly what I'm going to follow here today. Move this to the side. So we're deploying the OVA. Pretty straightforward. Um, once that appliance is, is started up and it's configured, we should see something like this from the console. Right, just giving us a status that it all deployed properly. So we'll see that in a minute. Um, then we need to deploy the function itself to the appliance. So we're looking for a specific event. And to do the deployment, we're going to need a couple tools here. So I'm going to use an Ubuntu VM that I have running in my lab here. So if I do this, I'm just going to SSH into that. Oops. All right, so now I'm logged into this Ubuntu VM. It's just on the network, right? But this is where I'm going to actually be uh, pushing the function into the appliance here. So let's do that. Uh, a couple of requirements um, to do this. I have Git already in here, so I don't have to install that. I do need to install the FAS CLI or Function as a Service CLI. Um, and then GoVC, if you want to use GoVC to create and manage your tags, you can do that. I'm just going to do it from the, the user interface here because I want, to, I want you to see kind of what I'm doing, right? So let's check up on this guy. Okay, so it's deployed. Let's power it on. And we'll watch it boot up. It'll take just a couple minutes, and I can uh, ping it as well. And I'll do the host name. Okay, so that'll come up here in a second. So in the meantime, let's install uh, the FAS CLI. So if we click on this link, it's basically just a one-liner here. We're going to use curl to go reach out and, and download that. Okay, so open FAS is installed. Where is, how's this thing doing? Okay, so it's setting up Kubernetes now. That should only take another second or two. Let's go back to the documentation. So I've got open FAS installed and I don't need GoVC. So basically what we're gonna do in this, this little example here is we're going to look for the event when a VM is powered on, and when it sees that, it's going to tag the VM appropriately. So first thing we need to do is create some tags, or at least one. So this is where, in the example, they say to go use uh, GoVC to do it, which is this whole section right here. But I'm just going to do it manually so everyn can see what it looks like, right? So we're going to go into vCenter, tags, create a category. apply it for VMs, and we'll do one tag. And then we'll create a tag. We'll call it TamLab and the categories use case. So we've got our tag now. Um, and then in the documentation here, what we really need is the URN for that tag, which is this long string here, right? Which you can easily use GoVC to find what that is. But if you go into the GUI and you click on the tag itself, you can see it's it's in the, the URL up here. So if you just copy this all the way to where it says global, that's what we need right there. So I'm going to put that in a sticky, I guess, for now. Okay. All right, what's next? Let's check our status here. So you can see it's up and running. So we can open up a browser and go to this, and we should see... 
open FAS, right? And here's the, the command that we use to install the FAS CLI, which we just did. Uh, but you can deploy a function from the GUI if you want. But we're going to use the command line. So let's go back to the instructions here. So we have our tag. We have our URN. Next thing we need to do is download the example functions that they've provided to us. So I'm going to use git to get that. Where am I here? So I'm going to move into my git folder. And we're going to download all these. And we're going to move into one of the examples, which is the, the tagging one, which is using Python. All right, so what do we have in here? So we have a few files. Um, the VC config is what we're going to configure first, because that's going to uh, contain all the, the things we need to connect to vCenter, right? So I'm going to do vim this. And what do we need to change here? So let's do the vCenter, first of all. We're going to put in the URL. And I'm just going to use the same administrator at vSphere.local credentials, which is not a best practice. And of course, everyone's favorite password, VMware one bang. And then this URN is what we need to change, right? So I'm going to create a new line, put in our new one. I think it's still, no. Wrong thing on the clipboard here. Go back to stickies. And we'll paste that in. And I need quotes. And then I can delete this other one here. So there's our new URN. So that looks good. We're going to write that quit. And again, I'm just following the documentation here, right? So the next step is we need to create a secret within the appliance, and it's going to use that file that we just created. So there's a couple of commands here that we need. So first of all, we're going to run this. Is it not? There we go. So let's put in. that. Okay. And then we're going to specify the passwords, the connection details. So my password. Okay. Okay. And now we need to create that secret. So we're going to leverage that file that we created or modified push it in as a secret and 202 accepted. So that's what we want to see. So now they're saying in the documentation, you can delete the VCC or VC config.toml file because it does have credentials in there. So you probably don't want to have that sitting on a server somewhere, right? I'm just going to leave it. Um, and then the last step is to basically define the function. So we're going to modify some of this which is in the uh, YAML file, the stack.yaml. So let's modify that. And we just need to make a few changes here. So this URL is our OpenFAS server or the appliance we deployed. And this is all the same. Everything else looks good. Uh, I do want to change this, and this is what this is the event that it's looking for. But if you have a cluster that has DRS enabled, the the event is actually different. It has, where is it here? Yes, DRS.VM.PowerDOM. So I'm going to add DRS in front of that. And what we could do is deploy this same function twice, right? One for a DRS enabled cluster and one without DRS enabled. So that looks good. I'm going to. Save that, and then we just have to deploy it. So we're going to use these little templates here, or these uh, commands. And we should see that it was deployed. 
We can verify that if we go over here and here's our new function that we just deployed. You can see it was never invoked at this point. So now if we go back to vCenter and let's create a VM real quick. Let's call it test. Sure, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. We have one CPU, one gig of RAM, and one gig of disk, and nothing else matters. Finish. Here's our new VM, and you can see it doesn't have any tags, but if we power it on, and do a quick refresh, I'm hoping, yep, now we have a new tag assigned, right? So it was an action taken from an event that it saw. And if we go back to OpenFAS, we now see it it was invoked once. So one thing I was thinking, let's power it off and power it back on. What will happen? I'm assuming it's not going to add it twice. How can you add the tag twice, right? It should just verify it's there. But does it show that it was invoked twice? Yes. But again, it's still, you know, you can't have the same tag twice, so. Pretty cool, right? I mean, I think it opens a lot of possibilities as far as what you can do from an event-driven automation perspective. So they do have some examples that they provide in that GitHub. So if we look at, where are we here? So here's our examples. There's some Power CLI ones, and then there's some Power, uh, Python ones. So let's look in here. What do we have? So again, there's a tagging one, hardware change, Slack. I don't know what that means, but I mean, the other cool thing, and I forget who was asking the question, but why can't you do this with VROPS? You can, right? For this example, you could do that. But the idea here is you could you could leverage all kinds of things because this OpenFAS appliance can connect to all sorts of stuff. I mean, look at some of these templates, right? We could do, you could create a meme. Where did I see it? There was a meme one in here. Like you could create a meme from some event, right? I mean, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it just opens up a whole another realm of possibilities, right, with other services that you could leverage. So pretty cool. Um, and then there's host maintenance alarms and then event bridge. So they give you some cool examples to go play with, um, but it's pretty powerful. So any questions on that? I know that was a lot and it was pretty fast. <laughs> okay. No, that was, that was really awesome seeing how you did all that uh, pretty quickly, actually, Steve. Well, it wasn't so quick last night when I was preparing. I, I, <laughs> it took me a good hour to figure out what the heck I was doing, but it was pretty cool. So, um, All right, let me stop sharing. Uh, Joey's going to take it away now and move over to the Horizon Help Desk Utility Fling.